14? I think this is episode 14. No, this is episode 15. All right, welcome to episode number 15 of the podcast. Uh, we're back with another member of Sewer Rich, actually. This is Cujo. What's up? Uh, yeah, he, so he works with my brother and, and, and Ralu and all that. I, uh, I, I was telling my brother yesterday that I've, I've been trying to get Ralu on for a while, but he's busy and so I know he's busy and I, I'm not expecting Super him. Super busy. Like, yeah. I mean, he said he would, so I'm just waiting for, just a waiting game. I'm not upset or anything. I mean, he's busy. Yeah. So, I think I'll do him, I'll, I'll have him <coughs> la- do, be last. So next I'll do three, I'll put three on, I'll see if he wants to. Then I'll just do Bill all the rich all the way from Dylan. I think they would come together too. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. That's true. They're always together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but you're different because you do, you, you re- produce and record your own stuff. Yeah. They all go to Saint, right? Yeah. That's cool. So, how long have you been doing that for? About a year. About a year. Cool. Uh, so, I have a list of 50 questions. I usually ask people at the beginning, I ask them. Three different questions off there, random numbers, just to get the juices flowing and okay. get conversation going. So, you want to give me three numbers, 1 to 50? 7, 11, 17. All right. Number seven, in the past people were buried with items they would need in the afterlife. What would you want to be buried with if, if you were going to do that? My shoes. Your shoes? Yeah, you're a sneakerhead? Yeah. Yeah. I love J's. Yeah. You said seven, and then you said 11? 11, yeah. 11. What's the most interesting building you've seen or been in? Uh, the CN Tower in Toronto. Oh, wow. Okay. You've been to Canada? Yeah, I've been to Canada. That's, that's cool. Because I'm from New York, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's right there. Yep, yeah, right yeah. there. Okay, that's cool. The only place I've been out of, out of the country is Jamaica and the Caribbean and Mexico. I'm planning something for Mexico soon, so. Yeah. Yeah, I heard. I thought Luke was saying that, that he was gonna go to Puerto Rico or something, but I, I need to go there. Yeah, which is technically a U.S. territory, but so. And then you said fourteen. Yep. Oh uh, no, seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, do you think children born today will be better or worse? Live better or worse lives than their parents? Better. Better. Way better. Better. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, start from the basic. So, what made you pick the name Cujo? Because the movie Cujo. Because the movie, that's what I thought. Stephen King, yeah. Yeah. I, was, I assume Cujo is in on your birth certificate. <laughs> I, nah, it's not. I was just talking with somebody at work the other day about, like, the movie. Yeah. How they, he was only fierce because he got the rabies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, he was fierce, so. Yeah. I come into it as fierce in a rap game. Yeah, okay. I like that. I like that. So, you do all your own stuff at home. You record and all that, so that's pretty cool. Um, you say you started a year ago? Yeah, I started a year, a year ago. ago. That's pretty cool. Did you always want to be in music since you were young? Uh, I was a drummer. Okay. I was a travel drummer. Yeah, okay. My and dad's then... a drummer. Do we have a big drum set right over there in the, in the room over there? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, so yeah, music's always just been, always been your thing. That's pretty cool. Uh, has it always, what kind of music did you play when you did drums? Uh, gospel. gospel. I was a church drummer. Oh, okay. Okay, that's cool. So it wasn't always rap. No, it was yeah. never rap. Yeah. I used to be hard on uh, church. Yeah. Never really listened to rap a lot. Yeah. To this day, I still listen to a lot of church more than rap. Yeah. Only got my Good. select few. Do you think that influences your own music? Yeah, I thought about switching over to gospel rap, but really? yeah. the way that yeah. it's set up, you're not really going to get noticed doing gospel rap more than yeah. hip hop. Yeah, that's true. Um but you can't get a lot of one-liners out of it and stuff that you can put into your stuff every once in a while. Luke does that. He, he, for some, he's weird. Like he, all his stuff is very spiritual. Like he has all kinds of spiritual tattoos. Yeah, I don't know if tattoos. tattoos. Yeah, he's got heaven and hell. Right I didn't see that one. Yeah, he's got heaven here, hell here, and then he's got all these angels coming down his arms, like fighting, fighting demons. It's pretty. I cool. just this whole arm right here is all uh, religious stuff. Yeah. You gonna? Are you gonna? Get more? You think? Yeah, I'm going to finish it up this yeah. year, but this is all, other than my son's name, this is all religious yeah. stuff. Oh, you got a son? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. How old I is got he? another one on the way, too. Oh, wow. How old, how old is the first one? Just turned one. Just turned one. Wow, okay. That's cool. Uh, you you put, you write about him in your music or anything at all? I try not to put him in the music scene because I don't want him to be like, Yeah. I don't want him to be involved. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's good. I see some rappers like put their kids in their music videos, like around them smoking and all kinds of stuff. I'm like, nah. I mean, I'll put hey. him in music videos, but I really don't want him involved into it. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good choice. That's a good choice. So, gospel and rap. You listen to anything else? I listen Isn't to a lot of pop. A lot of pop. A lot of pop. Country. Country. For their, for their melodies. Yeah. Yeah. I listen to a lot of country. Country is good. Country has a lot of good melodies and stuff like that. And very simple. Yeah. Very simple writing and stuff like that. So it's easy to, to catch on stuff. One of the artists I know, Jamie Ray, he just switched over. Like, he's doing hip hop and country at the same time. Oh, really? Oh, that's pretty cool. Like Taylor Swift, she did that. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think it's tough. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I think that's good. You do music videos and stuff, too, for uh, for your music that you, you got out? You so work with Dan? music videos? Yeah, I work with Dan. Yeah. That's the only one I'll shoot my videos. Yeah, but as it looks at, too. For music videos, all I... I try to do them to the songs that I like. Yeah. But I'm going to start trying to do them to the songs that the fans like more. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing Luke's been talking about, too. Like, it's one thing to, really, to release music and work on music that you like, but... Not everybody likes every single thing, like the same things. So you got to kind of find a balance of putting out stuff that people will like and also that you like. That, because some like some stuff that he that he writes, and I'm sure with you too, like it's just super like personal stuff mm -hmm. and nobody's going to understand it. Yeah, other than people that came from where I came from, they could really, yeah. they could harp on it a lot. Yeah, like some of it he just writes to vent. And then it never makes it. Like, he's not going to put that out because it's just too personal. Like, nobody's going to understand what he means when he says specific things because it relates specifically to instances he's, he been, he's been in or stuff like that. So it's like... Yeah, I get that. I mean, I do got some songs that I wrote specifically for me that I listen to. Yeah. Do you put stuff in your songs that you know people aren't going to get or, like, certain people will get? Like, one-liners that you know yeah. someone's going to get out there? And what I'm trying to, what I've been doing lately is making, so if I'm talking about where I came from, mm -hmm. I'm not going to directly say where I came from or like talk about stuff that happened. I'm going to try to make it so that it's people from a whole nother genre can hear. Yeah. And you said you're from New York, right? Yeah, I'm from upstate. You notice that if the rap is, <clears throat> or the music scene in general, I guess, is different up there compared to down here? Oh, yeah, it's way different. Up here... Well, down here, I think it's more like a slow, chill rap rather than upstate. It's more upbeat. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that a lot. Um, did you go on the trips with them too? Like to Miami or uh, LA? I haven't been on one yet. You haven't been on one no. yet? He looks said it was very different in Miami too. He said Miami was what? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm supposed to go on the next one. But yeah. I ain't been going on another any of them with him. Yeah. Do they mind that you do your own stuff and you don't go to Saint at all? Uh, yeah. I try to go to Saint sometimes, but yeah, I really just do my shit from yeah. my own house. That's the way you like to do it. Yeah. I probably do this. I mean, yeah. I like that too. Do you get a sense of like, like accomplishment from it doing yourself, doing it yourself, yeah. and like, like this is all me. Like I did everything. Yeah, yeah. I like I like owning. Like yeah, owning my stuff. So yeah, I, I get that. I get that. And it's cheaper for me to go buy something to record at my own house or my own setup. Yeah. Rather yeah. than keeping pay, keep paying every single time. Yeah. 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 So you said you work with with Dan. I work yeah. with Dan. Yeah, Dan. Dan's pretty cool. I want to get him on here too. Oh yeah. At some point, I think he'd be cool. He, he lives in best. Austin. He doesn't live here. He lives in Austin. Yeah, he lives in Austin. So. Best what? I think he's the best cameraman in San Antonio. Yeah. I've seen others. There's one other one, but I think he's the best one here. Yeah. He does good at promoting, too. Like, those little snippet things he makes, those are really cool. Like, the, yeah. like the, like the different, like, pictures on top and bottom. It has, like, a little snippet of the video in the middle. Those are cool. Those are pretty cool. I don't really see people do that, like, when they film people's videos. No, they usually charge extra for that. Yeah. Yeah, or they, they just don't do it. Like, it'll just be like a snippet of the video where, like, they have to cut it themselves and then mm -hmm. preview it. But those are pretty cool. I think that helps a lot for for ex exposure there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got a producer as well, so. Oh, yeah. Luke was telling me about that, that you got a producer that makes your beats. He said he's really good. Yeah, true. Trill. So, 
Do you think, like, having a good name is something important to your, like, something that people can call you? Like, sometimes people don't have really good names. They're like, that's a mouthful. Like, people, that's not going to catch on. Like, people no, I get that, yeah. Say that. So, at first, when I was picking out my name, I was trying to find something that I could hear people calling me. Yeah. And then, once I was like, came you up could with hear Kujo, the crowd chanting. Yeah. 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 Because everybody used to call me Rod. Okay. And but there's already Roddy Rich and Raw Wave, so I was yeah. like, let me be different. Yeah. Yeah. Like Luke's is his, he just goes by Luke. I mean, but you, you I like the seven in front though. Yeah, yeah, that's cool because it was big old seven tattoo, yeah. Yeah, it makes it different. But I, I always think that's weird too, like like I see people with like I don't know, like super duper something or like mm-hmm. or like young da 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 it's like no like who's gonna chant that in a crowd? I think, like, the young and the little is too played out now. Yeah, a lot of people were doing that. Like, that was a whole wave of just Lil's and Young's. Just... Luke used to be Young Lucas for a long time, but then he... I forgot what I used to be. <laughs> he changed that. It was Young something. Young something. But I forgot. Yeah, that's just... I associate that a lot with mumble rap and that kind of genre, which is finally going away. People are getting more lyrical. Oh, yeah. For sure, because like it's played out. Yeah. You think it's going to be easier for you guys to keep going up now that people are getting more into lyrical stuff and not just mumble, money, sex? Yeah. Like a... I mean, there's still... I think all the females are taking over the money and the sex part of the rap. Yeah. All the males are taking over the more, like, lyrical. stuff that people can feel Yeah. The lyrical. Yeah, I agree. Like... Somehow this year, Cardi B's song WAP was like the song of the year or something like that. I was like, come on. Like, out of everything, like, I like, it's a, like, I, like you're talking about Rod Wave, I listen to Rod Wave stuff, and his stuff is lyrical. Yeah, I listen he, to Lil Baby a lot. And Lil Baby the same way, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I listen to him a lot. Yeah, Luke listens to Lil Baby too a lot. Is there a specific, like, rapper or musician that you take influence from? Uh, like maybe you take their like the way they flow or the way they breathe or the way they I say Tory Lanez oh Tory Lanez Luke likes Tory Lanez a lot I've actually I say Tory Lanez I don't actually think I've ever heard anything from him my favorite artist is A Boogie and Lil Baby but I, I like listening to like Tory Lanez is the most like influential on me yeah yeah that's Luke I think Luke used to do Young Boy for a long time but then he, now he was writing uh, Tusi. You know who Tusi is? Oh, yeah, Tusi and Hot yeah. Boy. Yeah, yeah, Hot Boy too. Yeah, he likes Hot Boy a lot and Lil Durk right now. Um, but he does a lot of, he doesn't only rap, he likes to sing more too. Mm-hmm. Do you sing too? I know, I mean, I know you I sing. try to get melodic, yeah. But. Yeah, that's one of the things that, that I like in rap too. Like, I don't like, I mean, I'll listen to it, but I don't, it's not my favorite when they just, I mean, it's impressive that you can go for that long and just rap and rap and rap, but mm-hmm. I like there to be a chorus or something, like, melodic. Yeah, so, people like melody more, yeah. more catchy. Yeah. Like, uh, I remember when Kyle and Lil Yachty came out with their songs, and I liked those songs a lot because they had melody and hooks, and, like, it was more It was more than just, like, like, like just rap, just going. Yeah, I remember going. when they dropped that album. Yeah. Yeah, they did a good job with that. Um, I mix this really well. <laughs> you could smoke in here, like vape. Yeah, yeah, I don't, doesn't matter. As long as that won't go off, I don't think it will because the fan's on. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Is there something like specific that you know you want to buy when you start making like money, money, money? Like, I know Luke, the first thing he wants to do is buy a grill. That's his first big purchase that he wants to drop, like, a lot on. Uh, so I always told myself, like, even when I get the money, I want to go, every time I accomplish something, that's when I reward myself. Okay. So, if I sign, if I sign a deal, yeah, or get a platinum record, gold record, I want to reward myself with a, with a bust down watch. Okay. I don't plan on having a lot of chains. There's only two chains that I really want. 
one that says my grandfather's name that just passed and okay. one that says my brother's name that just passed. Okay. And then I will get a grill eventually. Yeah. But other than that, I don't really want all the clothes. I want to reinvest my money. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. If I start making money off of doing this or whatever, I don't think... I mean, I don't... It doesn't really... I mean, I do like some jewelry, but I don't need, like, tons of this stuff just to show. Mm-hmm. Or clothes or anything. Like, this is like an $8 shirt from Ross. I like, made this. You made that? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have... Uh, like a line of merch or anything? I just started it. Just started it? I just started it. And that'll be coming out in, in 2021? Uh, I started dropping. Now I'm doing customs right okay. now. Oh, yeah. Oh, I saw that on your story. Yeah, you're yeah. doing customs. That's cool. I don't think a lot of people offer that with their merch, which is something different. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I just made this actually this morning. Oh, wow. What, uh, you have a, like, a, like a press? Yeah, I got a, uh, a cricket machine. Oh, okay. My mom has a cricket. And a heat press. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's what my mom does. And oh, yeah. She, Luke told me that your mom makes a lot yeah, of stuff. Yeah, she was doing his stuff, too, but he's kind of picky, so. <laughs> Which you kind of have to be. Like, it's your it's your brand. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to you, you gotta be picky about that, so. Yeah. Like, this is my logo. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh, double picture over it. Over the, the thing. But, yeah. That's pretty cool. So, that's... You know, that that's you're gonna be your logo for all your merch and stuff like that. Yeah, and I just started my uh, own record label up last week, so. Oh yeah, oh, that's cool. So then I could be my own. I don't know if you see it in my bio, but it says HDN. Yeah, yeah. And then Sewer Rich. Yeah. So it's like I'm with I'm Sewer Rich, but I still have my own at the end of the day. Yeah. So you're gonna do both. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Uh yeah, that's pretty cool. How long has Sewer Rich been around now? I'm not sure. I got brought into it last year at last year. In September. Yeah. And Ralu is the, the face of it, right? He's yeah. The, he's the big dog. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you remember, like, like how you got into it? Was there, like, a specific song that he really liked that he, that he messaged you about or something like that? Uh... I met him at, a jewelry, at the jewelry store. And then, after I met him there, we started going to the studio together. Okay. I think it was after he got on my song. I didn't drop it yet, but after he got yeah. on my song, and then we started rocking out a little bit more, then that's when I became part of it. Oh, okay. So that's cool. Did he have you... Because Luke told me that when he had him in, when he was like initiating him into it, initiating. he told him to play seven straight songs. In a row, and uh, none of them could be like he had to like all of them. So yeah, I think that was the same day. Me and Luke played our songs, but I was in there before it. Yeah, it wasn't like I never had to play songs to him before it, before no. you picked me up. No. Yeah. But he did make us both play seven songs, and then he picked the best ones. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, so you met at the jewelry store. That's. cool. Okay. So and you didn't have to show you didn't show him any music or anything like that. You were just. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you did at some point because. I think the, f- I think the first song he seen was the one I played it when he came to to the studio. He yeah. wasn't a, originally. It was just my song. Oh uh, yeah. I played it, after he hopped on it, then that's when I became so rich. Oh uh, okay. Were you guys already going to the same studio or did you just? Nah, I found out about Saint through him. Oh okay. I found out about Saint and Dan through him. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, dang. So, I guess he's been rocking with them for a while then. So, okay. So, Luke's been going to Saint for, I think, like, probably two years now, I think. Like that. I wonder if that's how Luke and Ralu met then. Probably, probably so. I think so. I think they met at the studio. Yeah. I've been to the studio with him a few times and I've met a few people through there. Which is pretty cool. I guess... I didn't know that, but I guess Saint's pretty big in, 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 no, he is in, big. in Texas here, which is, which is pretty cool. Because he was like listing off some people that he's worked with, and I was like, dang. Yeah, he does, He is pretty big here. Yeah. He's good at what he does, too. He's really good. I have no problem going to him. It's just I'd rather have full control of my recording. Yeah. yeah. Do you have people come to you, too, to do their stuff? No, I usually just you stay just to myself. Yeah. That's cool. 
Do you ever, I asked Liz the same question, but like, do you ever have like people like DM you and asking you to promote like their stuff? Yeah, like, a lot of clothing brands. Clothing brands, yeah. A lot of stuff artists. Like artists, yeah. People ask you for features all the time? Yeah, people ask me for features, they try to get free features. Yeah, that's what Luke said. People are going to stop doing free features. So. Yeah, yeah. What's your rate for a feature right now? 1500 1500 I'm doing 250 right now until my video hits 100 k Okay. So I'm helping people out. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So you do do specials and stuff like that yeah. at certain times. That's cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. There we go. Yeah, like a month ago, my feature price is only 300 but... Ever since I started hitting numbers, yeah, uh, my price. What what video is it that you waiting to hit under K on? Uh, it's out the mud. Oh, out the mud. Okay, I listened to that too. Yeah, yeah, out the mud. Yeah. Do you do you write or do you freestyle or both? Uh, it depends. Lately, I've been freestyling. Lately, yeah, just freestyling. But if I really want to talk, like talk about something, yeah, then I'll write. Then you'll write. Okay, that's cool. Um. Do you, so when Luke writes, he says that he always starts with the beat. He gets the beat, and then he writes to the beat. Do you do the same thing, or do you have a different? Uh, I used to write before I got the beat. Yeah. So that I know exactly what beat I want. Yeah. But now, if I come up with a melody, I'll just call my producer, like, this is the melody I got. I record it over a voice, over oh, a yeah. voice recording. Okay. And then he'll make the beat, and then he'll come back with me to me with the beat. Okay, so and he then, knows you pretty well. Yeah, and then now well. he just sends me, he just send me a snippet like this is what I made of a, a beat. Yeah, you think you could work with this? And I was like, yeah. Okay, that's cool. People send you beats through your DM too. Yeah, I got a lot of people sending me beats, but the only producers lately I've been working with is uh, Triple Six and then okay. Saint. I mean, not Saint. Triple Six Trill. And then I just started working with one on that I met on Twitter. Okay, that's cool. Do you look for something specific in beats? Uh, I look for some that could be more industry. Okay. A lot of people send me beats, but I know that they're sending them to other artists. So yeah, unless I can actually build a relationship with them and we can work, and I'm only getting beats. Like not, I understand if they're sending beats to other people, but not the same beat that I'm getting. Yeah. Because yeah. I want all my stuff to be original. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Luke ran into a few problems where people bought the beats that he was recording with, and so he could he had to like take it off the album, as he that he was putting together and stuff like that. So is that yeah? Ever I used to. Uh, it actually just happened to a song that me and Menace got. Okay. Um, we had a song that we were that we pitched that we were pitching the TV. Yeah. And when we registered the song and went to go get copyright and everything. Yeah. It popped up that a whole other artist had it. We did not know oh, that, wow. the, uh, that the other artist had it at all. Yeah. So we had we got Trill right now remaking the beat. Okay. So when that happens, he can remake it so that it fits still. Yeah. He well, he's gonna go and make make a different beat. Yeah. Something different that just flows with. It's gonna be better. Yeah. Than what we had. But. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you ever like go to record something and then like you think of something better in your head and so you'd say that instead. Or like freestyle something better, you're like, oh wait, like this sounds. Yeah, there's better. there's actually times when I've been at Saints, and I'll have stuff written, because whenever I go to Saints, I'll write first. Yeah, and there's be there's been times where I would just delete everything I got and then just freestyle. Oh wow, that's crazy. Do you ever do stuff like that? You think it's gonna be, well, I guess it go either way. Like something you think that's super good, and then you go record it, and you're like, hmm, that didn't sound like it did in my head. Yeah, but then when I show it to other people, they're like, this is the one. Yeah, or like vice versa, where you're like, this isn't, uh, I, don't, I don't know how this one's going to be, and then you do it, and you're like, that, that, yep, that's it. That. <laughs> that's how my broken track came out. Yeah. I didn't think it was that good. Yeah. And then you do, so you do stuff that you, that you don't think is very good, but then like you do a snippet or something, and people are like, like that's fire, like that's so good, like drop that right now. Yeah. That's got to be crazy, like. Like yesterday, like, or the other day when I did Luke's podcast, it was kind of like, it was a little earlier in the morning and he had just woken up, so it was kind of like slow. And I mean, people liked it. Like people were still like, I got a lot of traction from that for some reason, but Luke came to me and he was like, 
it sounds like I'm off bars. Like, <laughs> like that sounds it, like that was way too early in the morning to be doing that. And he, he was like, it, it wasn't very good. He wanted to redo it, but people liked it. I guess I don't know. But that was the second one he's been on. He's been on it before. He did my my second episode ever. That's what I seen. It was pretty cool. So. Um. Yeah. Do you you have an autograph down and stuff too? No, not yet. Not yet. Do people ever recognize you in public yet? You got any? When I go to the mall, some people have noticed me before. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um. That's cool. So. Yeah, they recognize you. That's cool. Luke, Luke said the same thing every once in a while. But he said when you guys hang out with Raul, Raul gets recognized a lot. Yeah. People recognize him. I've had a lot of people, like, I think I went to, it was Canyon Lake last week. Okay. And while I was there, there was actually somebody there who was listening to my music. Oh, that's while cool. While they were driving. Oh, that's so cool. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. In my city, I went home. Nobody knew I was there. I was in a McDonald's parking lot. Oh, yeah. And there was somebody just blasting my music in the parking lot. Oh, wow. That's cool. So I bet that's really cool to hear. All yeah. The time. One time I used to work at Sonic. And um, so I would do the drive through thing. And I heard someone playing Luke's music. <laughs> when that's crazy. When I did the microphone thing. It was funny. It was pretty cool. I tend to play uh, what I do when I drive. I roll the windows down all the way. And I just blast everybody yeah. in the sewer rich. I just... Yeah. Because I got their own release, but nobody's going to hear it more than the time that they hear it when they drive past yeah. me. Yeah. Do you ever but, airdrop people music? Like if you're in like a crowded place or something like that? Or like... Uh, no. Nah. Luke said he, he does that. Like if he's stuck in traffic, he'll just start airdropping his music to people. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's smart. I never thought of that. Yeah, I didn't... I, I never thought of that either. I was like... He, said, he told that to Saint, and I was like... Okay. <laughs> I mean... That's a good way to get your, your music out, I guess. Yeah, it is. Okay. I've been it. handing out a lot of business cards to all the vape stores over oh, here. Oh, yeah? You got business cards? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I gave one I gave one store 300 and I just went there two days ago, and they're all gone. So oh, dang. He told me, like, people see it on there, and they just grab it. Yeah. Do people ever try to go, like, through you to get to Ralu? Like, message you, like, hey, you know Ralu, right? Like, I'm trying to... I've had a few artists try to do that. Really? And then they also, the way that they try to move is they'll try to hit up Rollo. He'll give him a price. And then they'll be like, oh, yeah, I know Cujo. Basically try uh, to pull the pull the mom and pop situation. Yeah, trying to get a deal. Try to get a cheaper price. Yeah. But he, he, I don't imagine he would give deals just because you know. So. Nah, really. Unless, I like, think he still charged somebody the same price. Unless you specifically like brought someone to the studio. Yeah. Or like this guy's like really good. Like. I don't think that ever happened though. No. Like in that situation, I've had people, I've had producers bring me artists to work yeah. with, and I still I charge them obviously, but not as high of a price that I would because they were brought to me. Yeah. Do you? Do you notice it? Do you have fans in like? I'm sure you have fans in New York because that's where you're from. But do you get like fans from like random places around the world, and you're like, hmm, "That's crazy! So, My music got over there." Right now, Brazil and Mexico City. Oh wow! Are one of my biggest. So oh, wow. right now, we're actually trying to set up a show for Mexico City. Oh, that's cool. Because we know that we can set up that we can definitely sell out more than five hundred people there. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Thanks. I wouldn't say a really big number, but I know for sure we could sell 500 there. You know why that's happened? Like, why Mexico City and Brazil? Uh, so, I, t I target them a lot. Oh, okay. I target Mexico City because Mexico City actually, like, they speak another language, but the people that yeah. understand will support you because it's the type okay. of music that they listen yeah. to. That's cool. I wonder if they translate the music, too. Uh, okay. I've actually had people in my comments on YouTube translate the music. Oh really? And put it. Oh wow! That's put it cool. in the comments for people. That's cool. Hmm. Yeah, Brazil, Mexico City. When I first started, it used to be the UK. Oh wow! A lot of UK people. Like I even have our UK rappers that I'm starting to work with. So. Yeah. Hmm. That's cool. Do you ever have people make fake pages of you? Like try to be you? Uh, I have, I only had one. One. Only have one fake page. Yeah. That's wrong. <laughs> I don't know. And I, I believe I only have I have one fan page. I think. Oh, a fan page. Wow. Yeah, I know cool. who runs it. Like, I talk to him daily. Yeah. That's pretty cool. 
Does that does that help your like traffic come to your page? Yeah, it actually does. When he yeah. used to, he had a little few problems that just happened in his life, but he used to post on it daily. He's from Canada, but is he a musician too? No, I used to I used to hang out with him a lot when I used to live in New York. So oh, okay, oh yeah. And then he went and made the fan page for me. Okay, oh that's cool. Do you have people? Do you have friends in New York that are musicians too? Uh, I have a few. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you do stuff with them? Like, do, do they have like, the same kind of style as you where you do stuff with them? Yeah, they do, but it's to an extent where I really try not to work with anybody from there because they hate so much. Yeah. Mm. And they're basically trying to compete with me. So I really don't want to work with another artist that's trying to compete with me. Yeah. Like on a track. I don't want to put you on a track if you're trying to compete with me. Yeah. I mean... Truthfully, I'm better, but yeah, I'm not gonna let them. Yeah, because it wouldn't be a good track if you're just trying to compete and not actually make a good song. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Have you ever like done a collab with someone that you like when they did their verse? You were like, hmm, that didn't sound as good as some stuff that I've heard. Like, I've had in it. I haven't like. There's still some uh features that i have waiting that i just never did because i wasn't really feeling the track yeah you just want to drop it do they ask you to drop it or they're like hey what happened to that track like yeah it's their track but they want me to drop it but i'm like i just i'm too busy so when you do a feature that's your track and you and it's not theirs right because they pay you with your track uh i feature on their track for them but okay Okay. most of the time these people want me to release it as my song. Oh, because you have more followers? Yeah. Yeah, okay. But I tend not to do that. Yeah. Like, right now, I only have three features that I actually mess with. And Luke and Rollo are two of them, so... Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something about Sue Rich. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, does Sue Rich, does Sue Rich do shows yet? Have they done any shows uh, I believe yet? Rollo sent one up. Real soon. Sound one up. Okay, that's cool. Here in town. I'm not sure yet where it's at. Sure. Hmm. But I know I know he's setting one up soon. Yeah. And you're all gonna get to be there. Yeah, we're all going. That's cool. Do you guys have a song all together, like all four or five of you, or whatever? No, I actually brought that up so that we could all do one. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like, yeah. like uh, what's that song? Uh, Forever, with like Drake and Eminem. Yep. And, like Lil Wayne, and all of them are on there. Yeah, That's I just brought that up to him about a month ago. Yeah. That we shall all do one track yeah. together. And he liked that idea? Yeah. Yeah. That song forever gets me all the time. It's so funny because, like, to me, I think Eminem is best on that. Just lyrically. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, some of them, it's just like, like, Drake's verse is not one of his best verses on that. It's just, it's I like. Mean, Eminem is Eminem, so. It's just so weird. Like, I would hate to do a song with Eminem like that. I'd be like. Especially with him going last, I'd be like, I'd almost be embarrassed. Like, if I heard that back, I'd be like, man. Hmm. No, I get what <laughs> you're saying. Little, that's a little, I don't know. I like Lil Wayne, though, too. Lil Wayne's really good with metaphors. Mm-hmm. Like, like his song, uh, what the, oh my gosh. This is like, oh, Six Foot, Seven Foot. Dude, his metaphors in there are amazing. Like, I think he's still good. He's yeah. still in the game for a reason. Yeah. And he has a unique voice, too. Yeah. You think that's a big part of it, too? Having a, like, unique sound to your voice? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's um, why I actually like Luke, because he's he's different than me, but he compliments my sound. Yeah. So that's why I really like him. Like, each of us in Sewer, actually, all of us are different. I mean, none of us rap the same. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've heard any of three stuff yet, but I have have heard about Lou and you and Luke. I think I heard a couple things with three, but I haven't really listened to him enough to know. Like, oh yeah, that, my favorite song by them is Crash. Is it on Apple Music? Yeah, it's on Apple All Music. Right, I'll have to listen to it. Yeah, that's three. Yeah, that's three and uh, Ralu. And Ralu, yeah, three and Ralu are are really close, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Was he was three in it before you? Yeah, he was in it way before. Oh, me. that's why they're close then. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, when I met them, they were together. Yeah, okay. Uh, you were in the military too, right? 
Yeah, I'm in the military right now, but it still. Okay. I do. I get out uh, at the end of this month. Okay, that's cool. Did you meet? Did you get to meet any musicians like fans through that? Uh, the no, military? but my commander is knows who DJ Khaled's oh, manager wow. and friend is. So okay. my commander, pretty, my commander, been giving me a lot of connects. Oh, that's cool. As okay. well as my captain. When he was on deployment, he was yeah. playing my music out there. So, okay. In Saudi Arabia, I have streams coming from there, like from a lot oh, of wow. people. Okay, that's cool. What branch are you in? Air Force. Air Force. Okay, that's cool. Dang. Yeah, I voluntarily separated next week. Well, I mean, like, I voluntarily separated. It got approved. So now I'm just waiting for my okay. last day. That's cool. I never even thought about that. That that would get you streams in different parts of the world. Because that's cool. I didn't. I didn't even think about that. Wow. Yeah, the deployments. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah. Do you... So when you start making a lot of money, do you think that you'd be helping a lot of people too? I, like, I is there plan specific to. people you have in mind that you're like, I'm going to take you up with me? Yeah. 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 All my... Everybody in my... My HDN circle, that's everybody I'm bringing yeah. up with me. Yeah, that's cool. If um, they're not in there. I was actually on a phone call before I got here. Oh, really? Yeah, about oh, that's, that. That's cool. It, you have, there, so there's like specific people in mind. Like, like I know me. So if I start making money off this, I have like a list of specific things that I'm going to do. So like the first thing, this is my parents' house. So I'm gonna, I would pay it off for them. Mm -hmm. And then I would buy them their own house and I would stay here. And then, so, the, so our upstairs doesn't have anything in it. It's just flat. Like, it's just a big room. So I'd make that my studio, take all this stuff there, make that my whole studio, and just do whatever I want with the rest of it. And then they would have their own house. Because they always talk about wanting to have a ranch house and, like, have a bunch of land. So I would do that for them. And that would be the first thing I would do. Um, and then, I, yeah, I just have, like a, like, a few things that I know that I would do. And you, you have the same thing? Uh, yeah, so the first thing I would do for sure, I pay off my house, because yeah. I own a house right now, so yeah. I pay that off, and I want to pay my mom's house off, because she talks about it a lot, so yeah. I plan on flying my mom out to wherever I move to, and where, then buying her a house. My mom's in New York. New York's in New York. What made you move from New York? Uh, I just wanted to, I just wanted a better lifestyle. Yeah. Did you move by life. yourself? Yeah, I moved here by myself. Yeah. How old were you? I was 18. Oh, I was wow. 18 when okay. I moved here. Okay, and how old are you now? 22. 22, okay, cool. I'm 23. I just said 23. Wow, okay. So, uh, so what were you saying? But you pay off your mom's house? Yeah, pay off my mom's house. Uh, move all my boys out here. Oh, yeah. All them. And then we plan on all getting a mansion together, so. Okay, so you do one of those houses where, okay, that's cool. We actually been looking at a few. Yeah. And we were thinking about doing it like this year, but we're gonna wait till we have a bigger down payment yeah. to put down. I I, I was wondering if Sue Rich were gonna do something like that, like have a Sue Rich house, but I don't it would know. be I saw nice. Raul just got a new house or something. He was at he posted on his Instagram that he was at the, he posted all this house and he's been posting that for like a week. So I don't know if it's his or if it's an Airbnb. Oh yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know what it is, but it's nice. And they've been there for a while. Him and three. Yeah, I seen it on the story. Yeah. Dan was there with them. Yeah, Dan too. Which means they must be near Austin. Yeah, I think they're in Austin. Yeah, which is pretty cool. But that'll if that if he did buy that house, that'll make it more difficult to get him on. Yeah, because <laughs> he'll have to drive. But yeah. Um. So with your mom. Uh oh, is there a specific car you'd want too? You do you like cars like that? Yeah, I got. You have a dream uh, car? Yeah, I got a dream car. My dream car was actually a Mustang. Okay. And I got a Mustang. I got a 5.0. Yeah. And then the next thing that I want is I told my wife that I'm getting a Urus next. Okay. Either a like Urus or a GTR, Urus. that's okay. what I'm going to get next. Yeah. I like GTRs too. Those nice. So you're married. Yeah, I'm married. So that's cool. But I want to get I want to get a Urus because it's bigger. Yeah. As well as buy my wife a Maserati. So. Yeah. You can take your family in the Urus. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. can't take my family in a GTR. Like I'll buy a GTR as a toy car, but yeah, yeah. And your wife is cool with the music and all that too. Yeah, she supports it a lot. Yeah, is she musically inclined at all? No, she's actually going to school right now to be my manager. So oh well, okay. That'd so be that's cool. all 
in my circle, everybody who... Okay. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Right now, another artist is my manager, Menace. Okay. And my uncle is also... My uncle helps me out a lot. So you keep everything pretty close. Like yeah. Everything is... People you know, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Trying to build a solid team before I... Yeah. Do anything yeah. else. What do you think are the essential parts of a team? Uh, like if someone's trying to build their own team, what, what would you tell them is there? What do you need? Well, before I, before I actually made my team, I came up with my game plan and sat down with all my friends and had them choose their own parts. Yeah. So I have somebody that designs, helps design my merch. Okay. Have a, a manager, a DJ, and then a role manager. And then as well as a role manager, I needed somebody that I could trust who, to run my money. Okay. And okay. if they're running my... And then also somebody who can run my social media for me. So all I can focus on is the music. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a good idea. So you have someone running your financials. That's cool. Um, that's pretty cool. I remember... I, I do think... Yeah, that's... Very important to find someone that you can trust to do your, your, your finances. There's been a few artists that have been in a bad position because of that. I remember a few years back, or I don't know, maybe a little more than a few years back, uh, Hobson, something happened bad with Hobson. You know who Hobson is? He, I, he put out this like song about it, but something happened with his financial guy or whatever that was like taking parts of the money and stuff like that, which it was a whole... Yeah, I want to make sure I trust... like somebody before I actually give them full control over my bank account. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. So if someone out there wants to do music as well, like, and, uh, like for real, like not like just some SoundCloud mobile rapper, like if they really want to do music, uh, what do you tell them? Like, what do you think is like the most important thing? Owning your music. If you're going to do it, it's a business, not a friendship. Everybody I work with, I try to make it Straight business, other than friendships yeah. on the side. Uh, a lot of money. Yeah. And what do you tell me is the least important thing? Like, don't like, you don't worry about that. Like, people tell you, like, it's about this, but it's not. Like, don't worry about that. Um. Or is there like anything in the game that is like, like a myth, like that's fake, like, like don't worry about I'm that. I'm trying at all. to think. Like, so when I was first started. A lot of people were telling me, damn, I'm trying to think. So image is definitely the one of the most important. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be designer. Yeah. It can be your, your image is basically who you are. So. Okay. Yeah. Like me, I started buying designer and stuff, but then I started Going back to buying everything that I like. I like Jordans. Yeah. And I like stuff from like Zoomies and H&M. Like I like their clothes. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I'm really not into all that designer stuff. I will always wear J's. But like I don't plan to, even when I get money, spend $1,000 per pair yeah. of jeans. Okay, so you'd say image is different than flexing. Yeah, okay. way different. Okay. I don't think the jewelry is a necessity. People will see you more. With jewelry. One thing that... I could say one thing. A blue check is not necessar necess a necessity. Okay. A blue check yeah, on Instagram yeah. is not a necessity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I notice a lot of people try and go after that. Like, I'm not verified yet. I'm going to get verified. I'm going to get verified. But if your content's good, what does that matter? The music. If the music speaks for yourself, if you have a lot of content and good content... It'd definitely make you notice. I got on BET without a blue check, so. Okay. Wow. Okay. Dang. Do you think you're going to stay in San Antonio? No, I plan on leaving. You plan on leaving? I want to yeah. go to Atlanta. Okay. That's, you think the rap scene's better there in Atlanta? I do think it's better in Atlanta, but I want to be in Atlanta so that I'll be right in the middle of Florida and the Carolinas. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The rap scene here is very weird. Sometimes it's... I feel like there's a lot of people here that, I don't know how to say this, but they're SoundCloud rappers. Like, they're not, 
musicians. They're not mm -hmm. lyrical. Like they just they just want to do it because it's cool. I see a lot of people out here that don't take it serious. Yeah. They just want to rap just to rap. Yeah. And I've actually had people who ask me for features who just rap to rap. Yeah. But I want to keep it strictly business. If you're not serious, then yeah, I'm going to have to part our ways. Yeah. Have you had to part ways before? I have. Yeah. It's crazy. I had to cut some family off just to... Oh, wow. Just yeah. to better myself. Yeah. I think that's something a lot of people don't understand. Like, you're going to lose people. Like, you're going to... like. You can have this group of friends, but, like, they're not all going to stick the farther you go up. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to lose... A, not necessarily, like, you're going to lose all, but some of them you have to cut ties with. Like, it's yeah, not I, always... I've actually had people who I, who I was friends with in high school. They changed their lanes. They started... They moved separate ways. Yeah. And now I see them coming back now because they see where I'm at. Yeah. That... That was a question I was gonna ask. So you have people like message you like, "Oh, we were remember me from high school." Like, I have people that try to get features because of how we were, how close we were in high school. Yeah. And then if I tell them once I tell them the price, they like, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is that like a tell to you that someone's like serious and that someone you can work with? Like, if you tell them your price, they're like, "Cool," like I got you. Yeah, because. Honestly, the way that I think about it, if somebody else was to give me a price, if I was to work with another artist that's not at the point that I'm at, but they still have a price like two fifty, I'd yeah. say, you have to respect their price. Yeah. Because when you think about it, a cameraman is charging their price, their set price. Yeah. Char a cameraman will give deals based on certain days, but when you're going out to eat. You go to McDonald's, you're going to pay a dollar for that burger every time you go there. Yeah. That dollar burger is not going to change unless they have a deal going on. So you have to pay that price for what you're getting. Yeah. And I see for me, I think that 1500 is the perfect price because it's not too high. I mean, it's 1500 yes, but that's built off me investing in myself. Yeah. I put way more than $1,500 into myself, so... Yeah. I feel like that... It's respectable. Yeah. So, when someone's starting off, like, I know... So, I do photography. I do professional photography. So, I know when I was starting off, like, I had to do stuff for free. Mm -hmm. Just so I could get pictures and I could show people a portfolio or, like, you know, something like that. So, what do you think your advice is for people that are doing that? Like, when they should start charging? Like, stop getting stuff for free or stop, like, like start charging? And what do you think is a good place to start charging? Like, how do you gauge? What do you I think. I think you should keep stuff free. Until. You've built a name for yourself, and you started. People know you more. Okay. And I wouldn't say views is necessarily. A big. I mean, yeah, views can change your price. Because views has changed my price, but it's not just views that have changed my price. It's stuff that I have going on behind the scenes that... Yeah. And the connections that I've built with bigger people that I know are seeing my stuff when I put it out. So now okay. I know, like, if I'm giving somebody a feature, basically, I'm showing them to these bigger industry people for free. Yeah. Rather okay. than you're paying me 1500 it's not just for a feature because now... If I'm posting you on my social media, you're going to have bigger entertainment people seeing it. You're going to have people in a bunch of different, uh, I forgot the word for it. You're going to have a bunch of different people seeing your stuff. Yeah. Bigger people than me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, What did I say? Again, I had a question in my head and I forgot what I was going to say. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. Um, oh, so, also, what advice would you give about people making the image? Like, how do you, like, 
like if someone doesn't know what to name themselves or someone doesn't know what you know I don't know like if someone's self-conscious about what they wear or whatever, like how do like obviously something that you can hear a, ch- a crowd chanting mm-hmm. something not like ridiculously long or ridic- like hard to say uh so I'd say that for image the best thing is to be you Okay. Because, like, I've had people come to me saying, I like you because you're different. You're not the yeah. same as everybody else. Like, yeah, a lot of people wear Jordans and stuff, but what I say in my music, the way that I say stuff, is different. Yeah. Image is not just the way you dress, it's the way that you carry yourself. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, do you also have, like, within your team, like, people that you'll show unreleased music? unreleased music too that'll tell you like oh like I, I didn't like that verse very much I think you should da 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 or like I, that verse is really really good like that like that, that that's gonna hit yeah, yeah I tend to show everybody in my that's in my circle my music yeah. you, you, you think that's a good thing to do for people that that want to start music like show it to people that you trust first uh yeah and no I think that when you're showing it to people in your circle you got to have yourself surrounded by people that will tell you no, that it doesn't sound great. Not a bunch of yes men. Yeah, so honesty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not a lot of yes men. I agree. So, okay. So when you're in the studio and you go to do a song, um, what, how do you know, like you, what are your tells that it's going to be a, a good song? So like my brother said, one of his tells is that if it sounds good unmixed, then he knows it's going to be a good one. Mm-hmm. So do you do you have any tells of what of how you know before it's like finished? I mean, the way that I used to do it, whenever I used to go to the studios, I would watch the engineer. So when I see the engineer's head start like bopping, yeah. that's when I know that it's really something because... Anybody who goes to Saint, they know like he just chill, like he just yeah. sit there mixing. Once he start actually, like not in his head, you know that it's something good. Okay. Yeah. So most of the time, I go based off the energy around me. Okay. Because it's not me that I'm making the song for; it's everybody else. Yeah. So I know that if the people in the room will like it, other people will like it. Yeah, that makes sense. So. Um, yeah. So. If I, okay, so just read the room pretty much. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's pretty cool. Luke said the exact same thing. He said if he sees Saint moving, then he knows he's good. Because Saint's pretty just there. <laughs> like he, So my first time, my first time going to an actual studio when I actually recorded, well, my second time. Because I went to a studio in my hometown, and I, I thought the song was all right. But once I see myself improving, I went to Houston. And I went to the studio out there, Wire Road. Yeah. And the engineer there, he's good friends with Concept P, which is Six Nines producer. Okay. So at first when I started recording, he said that he thought my music was pretty good. And I asked him, could he bring Concept P in there? Yeah. So that he could hear me. Like he called. At first he was kind of hesitant. Yeah. After I finished recording, he was like, I wasn't going to call him. But now I'm going to call him because I actually like your music. So Concept P came up there. And while we were sitting in the studio working and stuff, after I seen him actually like get into the music and he was actually liking it, that's what made me start working harder because he's pretty big in the industry. So yeah, after seeing him like get into my music and like my music, that's what made me push harder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, someone that, so there's someone that wants to start music. It's the same way so with photography. So a lot of people will message me wanting to start photography and all they want to talk about is the equipment. Like I need like I want to get a super big uh, super big camera or I need this super big lens or you know, I need the perfect looking model or whatever. It's like no you don't. Like I mean obviously that stuff helps. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like a bad thing if you have that thing, but you can still get good pictures. You can still do good photography. If you just know what you're doing with what you have. So in the same way with music, what do you tell someone that's like, 
that just want like just wants to start. So like the very first time you ever recorded yourself singing something that you wrote, I'm sure you weren't at Saints. I'm sure it was through your phone or something like that. So what do you tell someone that's like in the same boat? Like they're like you tell them the same thing, like you don't need to go to a big studio. Like just record yourself. So Hear how you sound. I don't think that they should go to a big studio because I was actually watching Russ. Okay. And Russ actually said that he started out with a, a baby bottle mic. Okay. And wow. a, a, it's one of the old interfaces that I have, which is a cheap mic and a cheap interface and yeah. then a computer to record. So I'm actually doing a giveaway right now. Okay. I'm just waiting. And I'm going to give away my mic that I used. Oh, wow. Okay. Because I went out and bought a Newman mic. Yeah. Because I want to like just enhance my audio more. Yeah. That's not what I'm using. And I I made all my songs prior to Up and Away. Actually, Up and Away was made on that mic. All my songs up until everything that I have not released yet. Okay. Yeah. On that old mic. It's not all about the mic quality. I mean, the mic quality is something, but it's all about how it's engineered. Yeah. Okay. I want to say, if you want to go to a big studio, big studios are really used for uh, recording and entertainment purposes for Instagram posts or even like just higher class engineering. Yeah. Okay. So when you were first starting, how did you know that you found your sound? Like you, like, like you listened to something you recorded and you were like, this is my sound. Like this is how I'm going to be. Uh, I didn't find my sound until after, after going up, my song going yeah, up. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. All the songs prior to that, I didn't think that that was me. Yeah. It's, is that some, just something you just know? Yeah. Like you something. hear it and you're just like, that's it. Like I know it. Okay. Yeah, and then that's when people started supporting me a lot more. Yeah. After that one. Then Jungle came and people started supporting you even more. And then all of twenty twenty I didn't drop. I just worked on myself. So but what did, what what advice do you have on dropping as well? Because some people like I know some artists that'll drop like once a week. Or like or twice a month, whatever, and then I know some artists that'll drop twice a year. So my plan this year is drop once a month. So I, I've been on track with that so far. I've dropped a song a month. Okay. And the plan that me and everybody in Sewer Ridge came up with is drop a certain amount, drop a certain amount of music videos, and then hit them with something else. Yeah. So I think when I first started out, I was head on dropping everything. Just keep dropping, keep dropping. But if you keep dropping and keep dropping, you're going to... Drop one song, start promoting it, and then you're just going to stop promoting that song and drop a new song. Yeah, so you stop and, before it even get the chance to blow. Yeah, so you want to actually find your sound first, and then drop music and push one song. Because one song, that one song could be it if you push it the right way. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So like you could, you could almost like smother its, like, what do you call that? Like it's... Uh, like it's prospect or like it's like, what what do you call that? Like, the hype, like yeah, like the hype or the prospect or like the uh, like the greatness of it that you don't even know mm -hmm. by just dropping too much over and over and over and over. Yeah, like that's why with the Out the Mud song, I've been pushing that song so hard. Like I've been prom promoting it since last June. Oh and wow! I've been just pushing it, and then I finally dropped it in March. So even after you drop, you should still promote yes. older stuff. Still promote. Like, just don't only promote, like, the newest thing you have. Like, just promote everything. You just keep promoting and promoting and promoting. I know Luke was saying that's a, a big thing that Raul is into is... is um, like, pushing his music? Yeah, like, yeah. pushing it and promoting it. And just over and over and over. Yeah. And I noticed on Raul's stories, like, every day, like, one of his songs is promoted. Mm -hmm. Something, somehow. I, I've been doing that and now I actually got people who've been promoting my old songs now because they're hearing yeah. them now. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Another thing I'd say that I did a lot, I made a lot of mistakes with, I spent a lot of money on sending money to Instagram influencers to post my stuff. Oh, okay. And 
I've been scammed in the past. I've listened to people like say that, oh, I'm going to bring you to this label meet when I first started out because I just yeah. wanted to, I was thinking I was the best artist in the world. Yeah. But one thing I will say is don't pay for fake streams. I will never pay for fake streams. I will never pay for followers. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, that I bet there's a lot of that. Like some people you will see with like, I don't know, like 50,000 followers, say, but they only get, like, 200 views mm-hmm. on their, on or, like, 200 likes or whatever on their post. And you can buy likes. So the way that Instagram is working now is you can buy likes, you can buy views, you can buy followers, and you can buy comments. One thing you can't buy is saves on a post. Okay. Or repost. Yeah. So that's how you know who's actually supporting you is by off those saves and those reposts of the stories. So the more that, the more real that your followers are, they will save your posts and they will repost them. Because okay. you can buy comments, but I notice now still though, people are buying followers, yeah. but they'll have like 10,000 followers with like five comments on their post. Yeah. When really you should be getting at least 100 comments on your page. Yeah, yeah. I see a lot of you guys in Too Rich. Like, if I go to your post, like, you guys get tons of comments all the way down, just gator emojis mostly. Yeah. Ooh. And people will say stuff too. And that's how, like, that's how I, I know a lot of interaction. Like, some, like, some people, artists in the city or whatever, like, they don't have any comments really. Like, mm-hmm. they have like two comments or something like that. And they're like, yeah, I noticed that a lot. And, Actually, if you go to labels, they'll know. Like yeah. labels will know that you're buying your views, you're you're buying your followers because it won't add up. Yeah. Like I've had I've had sit downs with two labels already, and they've looked at my stuff. And the people in the past that I've done stuff with, they were going to check out their pages and like, I don't think you should be working with this person. Their this page looks like they purchased a lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Recently, I've had a label say that they hope that I did not pay another person for a promotion and that they don't want me to pay this person for a promotion. Oh, yeah. Because somebody else, another artist that I've worked with and that they've seen in some of my stuff, they actually bought a lot of stuff, like views they bought, um followers and they know the person that they bought it from so they told me cut that out like don't work it with any of them yeah they don't even want me working with the artist anymore oh wow dang that's crazy um i keep forgetting what i always think of a question and then i forget it but it always comes back to me um what so how many platforms are you on uh, music all of them, wise, I believe not social media wise, but like music wise. So Apple Music, Spotify, Spotify. Uh, what's the one that starts with a T? Triller. No, it's one of the higher paying ones. Uh, I forgot the name of it, but I'm on there as well. I'm on Pandora now. Okay. I'm on Genius. Uh, SoundCloud, okay. but I tend not to drop on SoundCloud. Yeah. Cause I just I just think SoundCloud's too overhyped. Yeah, the stigma. Right? Yeah. SoundCloud's a little. Um, I'm on Google, Amazon Music. Okay. So if if someone has a Alexa and they say Alexa, play Cujo, will it play? Yeah. Music? So right now what I'm doing is because I switched from Cujo to HD and Cujo. Yeah. All my music is transferring to HD and Cujo page. Oh, okay. But on YouTube and Apple Music. And I believe Spotify, everything is the same now. Okay. That's pretty cool. What do you think is the, is like the best one to drop on? Like which one do you get the most interaction from? Uh, lately, it Spotify. Yeah, changes. lately. I just seen a spike in my uh, monthly listeners on Spotify. Yeah. Okay. A lot more people have iPhones and Androids too, right? So yeah. Apple Music is always bigger than Google. But I know some some phone companies will give you, like, free subscriptions to Spotify. Yeah. So people will use Spotify over Apple Music sometimes. Yeah. I think we got a a subscription from our phone company to Apple Music, actually. 
which is pretty cool. Yeah, I got that right now with Apple Music, but I haven't checked my uh like all my statistics on well my analytics on Apple Music in a yeah. while. But I know last time I checked, they were pretty high on there. So do you do a lot of research into that stuff too, like the analytics of Instagram, and like the analytics of like of like Apple Music and stuff like that, so you know like when the best time to drop is, like when your followers are the most active. Yep, I do that even when I drop on when I post on Instagram. Yeah, I I, I notice a lot of people don't do that. Like they just drop when it, like mm-hmm. they just post like their whatever, and they don't I don't know they don't give as much as they would. I mean I do that. I really don't look into it very much. I should, but I don't. I just haven't. I don't know. But that's something that I think a lot of people don't do that would help them. So I just started that. And because recently on Instagram, I've been having like high interaction and high viewing of my page. Yeah. So I've been posting at certain times when I see that amount. And then as for YouTube, I dropped my Out the Mud video right when I seen it at its peak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I seen it just, it hit like, I think it was 5K the first night on Out the Mud. Yeah. And then after that, I knew it was just going to go up. Yeah. So, so we talked about promoting stuff that's out already. So how, what about promoting stuff that's not out? Like how long do you take to hype it up before you post it, before you actually drop? Uh, so on Facebook, I've been running like, uh, so I don't run Instagram ads. I run Facebook ads. Okay. And... I'll run it for 30 days, let it, so I can find out who my original target is. Yeah. And then once I run it for that 30 days and I get everything back, that knowing who's actually watching, who's paying attention, who to target, then I'll go and target that group of people and rerun another ad. And then that's what's bringing my generic fans in. Okay. So I did that when I first started YouTube ads as well. And I started getting more views than I'm supposed to through my YouTube ads because they're mostly generic. Yeah. And okay. I'm targeting the right people. Yeah. So, I, so, so, yeah, so that's another thing is targeting the right people too, like not just like whoever. Because so. I believe when I started out my YouTube ads, I was running at $5 a day, which is really $5 a day is supposed to get you... Like, I think it said 1.2K viewers okay. to 5K viewers in a, every two weeks. Yeah. And yeah, I guess it got based off the music. I was getting more because more people are watching now. More subscribers okay, yeah. are coming in. So that's what basically was boosting it. Yeah. The organic followers. Do you think, like, going live on your pages helps too? Uh, kind of. I think that... It can help a little bit, yeah, but I want it to be in person. That's why I'm going to start doing shows Yeah. rather than going live on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I notice a lot of people do, like, viewing parties on their on their lives and stuff like that or, like, preview their music, which is cool, but it's, like, you know, you also got to time that right, too, because people are at work or people are at... Yeah, you got to find the perfect time. I don't know. For live, I actually don't know the perfect time to go live. Yeah. I tend to go live late at night, which is when everybody's mainly asleep. Yeah. But I'm going to start uh, going live at different times now. Okay. Because also, one thing I hate about live is they can screen record you without you knowing. Oh, yeah. So if I'm playing unreleased, somebody I don't like, they can easily screen record it before I drop it and go basically promote it. Yeah. yeah. And basically drop the song and ruin it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think about that. Um, has that happened to you before? It hasn't happened to me yet, but I got like people saying that they were gonna do it before. Yeah, that's crazy. That's why I, I went. And I started copywriting everything now, so yeah, everything in my catalog right now is copywritten. Everything that is out now is copywritten. So if anybody was to go do that, they'll immediately get copyright infringement. Yeah, that's I, people don't do that very much either. Like they just. A lot, like, they don't deal with, like, legal things like that. Like, they just drop and drop and drop and do whatever they're doing. People don't know about it, so that's also another thing I just did last week. I got my LLC for my own record label. Okay. And copyright, copyright my name as well as my label name and any graphics that 
we use. So the HDN logo is all copyright and everything copyright. Yeah. So do you, you have design guys too that help you design your, or do you do that? Uh, so my best friend, he knows how to draw. Okay. But he didn't do this one that I did. I got it off of Fiverr. I oh, came okay, to them yeah. with the idea. My wife actually drew this HDN one on my back. Yeah. But then the one that's on the front, I got I got it off of Fiverr. Yeah, that's from Fiverr. My podcast logo. Yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty good, good on Fiverr. Yeah, and they're pretty good, fair price too. Because it's, I mean, it, yeah, they're pretty fair price. It's people's work. Like they know, yeah. they know what to charge you, which is cool. Um, I plan on, I'm I definitely going to use Fiverr again. They're really good, so that's pretty good. Yeah, I want to get somebody for me who can design everything on my own so I don't have to go to Fiverr. Yeah. But I'm waiting for... So what, so what do you think are like the essential parts of, your, of a team? Like if someone's going to put a team together, what are some people you need to look for? Uh, so manager? Yeah, manager. Financial person? Financial person, a, a producer. Producer. And an engineer. So right now my producer is my engineer. Yeah. So it's best if you can find one that can do both. Yeah. Yeah. And then some people could do it on their own. Like I know how to produce on my own. Yeah. I just don't. Yeah. Do you know how to mix and stuff on your own too? I don't know how to mix no. fully. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the big things that helps too. Make, like mixing. Like Luke will listen to some of his songs and he's like doesn't like it at all and then it's mixed and then he's like, Oh, that sounds way better. Yeah. That's way better. And one of the other things that's really weird, I don't know if you experience that too but he he tries to make it so that it sounds pretty similar on different speakers it's like he'll play music in the car versus on the alexa versus on his out of his phone speaker or on mm -hmm. his headphones and some of them don't sound as good yeah because it's a different kind of speaker and so he he said that's one of the one of his tells as well is that if it sounds good on multiple different speakers then it's probably going to sound, gonna sound good, gonna yeah. good but iTunes and uh, Spotify do turn on your music down when you uh they do? when you submit it. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. They automatically turn it down, so that's why you wanna. It's a certain dB. My producer knows about it, so when he mixes my songs, he will mix it too above that dB because he knows that they're gonna bring it down. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Like I don't think a lot of people even know that. You no, know, a like, lot of people don't know about it. So that, I that's one thing that I guess that would be good to tell people that want to get into that kind of thing is like know the social medias. Yeah. Like, because you get, like the, you learn stuff that is necessary like that or like when to post on Instagram like when you'll get the most things like that. That's, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I think we've been going for a good time. So you're talking about a giveaway. How do people enter that giveaway if you're watching this one enter your giveaway? Uh, so we're, me and Tro are going to set it up to have it. We're trying to find somewhere where we can do a drawing where it's not us picking. It's yeah. computer generated. Okay. Yeah. And the way that they can enter is they go subscribe to Mine and Trill's uh, YouTubes. They okay. follow us. Yeah. And then there'll be a few more people that they have to follow. And then they also in the means of that they have to uh, download one of our songs wait one of my songs okay yeah because downloading and purchasing is the same thing so they, they either download or purchase it yeah they'll get that and then they have to share it to their story and tag three people okay so, so I'll, put, I'll put all your links in the description of this video so if you want to enter that giveaway you can or just to go listen to his music you can do that as well so we're going to start that up uh, I believe at the end of this month Sounds and good. then we're going to be giving away, I'm be giving away a mic, well, all recording equipment to yep. one artist. But the thing is, the artist has to be somebody who has a means of getting his stuff mixed or knows how to get his stuff mixed. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. So it can't just be some random person on SoundCloud. Yeah, just... it just can't be a random artist. And it has to be somebody who's determined to do something. Yeah, okay. And then another giveaway that we're doing is a beat and a free beat. Free feature, mix and mastered by my producer. Okay. To one artist. Yeah. So are you going to exclude Sewer Rich too? So it's. it's yeah, it's going to be. Fair. It's going to be uh, Sewer Rich excluded. <laughs> That'd be so funny if Ralu won. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not going to be anybody around me or anybody that I know that can enter it because. 
Yeah. Obviously, anybody in my circle, you have different rules for working together. Yeah. Makes sense. It's pretty good. All right. So, you can go ahead and slap a signature on that bad boy. I got you. Whatever you want. Whatever color you want. That is black. No, that's blue. That's blue. While you're doing that, I'll go ahead and do the quote of the day. Usually, or every time I do the quote of the day, which is one of these quotes, I tape it up on there. Hopefully it means something to someone. You know when you're going to drop next? Uh, what your next song is going to be? Yeah, I'm dropping real soon. Real soon. Keep an eye out for that. Like this month soon or May? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm dropping this month. This month. I'm dropping a song this month. Okay, cool. So look out this month for a song by Kujo. His links will be in the description. Uh, yeah. Any Sue, Sue Rich projects coming up? I believe so. Yeah. Be on lookout for that too. Do you guys have a Sue Rich Instagram page? That's Sue Rich or is it just Ralu? And I believe there's page? one Sue Rich page. I think Chris runs the Sue Rich page. Chris runs, I'll look it up. If there is one, I'll, I'll link it so people can follow that as well. All right. Okay. This is from Charles Dickens. Happiness is a gift, and the trick is to not expect it, but to delight in it when it comes. I agree. That's real. That's real. Boom. All right. Anything else you want to plug or talk about or any advice you got or anything, anything you want to say? Uh, no. Stay humble. Stay humble. That's the way to go. And if people want your merch... Do you have a store, or do they just DM you? Uh, they contact me directly for customs. Okay. If not, if you want to just buy merch, it's uh, in the link in my bio. Okay, cool. I'll put that in the link in the description, too. So yeah, I can I, send you a link. I have everything. Uh, on a link tree or something? Yeah, on a link. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Do you have a, like an online store? Yeah, I have an online store. Yeah. Is It's on my website. Is merch all they can get there? Uh, No, merch, my music. And then once we start doing shows, we're going to put our tickets up there. Okay. That's cool. Boom. Boom. There's the quote. All right. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. So click the links in the description and enter the giveaway. Let's go buy some, some merchandise or tickets uh, here in the future. Be on the lookout for his next. Is it going to be a song or an album? That you're oh, it's going to be a single. Just a single. All right. Uh, for the single and uh, run yeah. out the mud to honey K. Oh yeah, that one too. That'll be linked. I'll link that in the description on YouTube, right? Honey mm -hmm. K on YouTube. What's that right now? Uh, eighty K. Eighty K. Was that seventy K last night? Yeah, we're at eighty K right now. All uh, right, if you're watching this, go watch that like fifteen times. <laughs> The link for that will be in the description as well. And, uh, yeah, we will see you, I will see you in the next podcast.